Okay, now that we have details, we have the materials, the furniture, we have, we've talked about the lighting a little bit, we've even talked about render settings, we have our model. We could add more detail to the model if we want. You can actually do whatever you want with the model and make it adjusted to your liking. But we're going to move ahead with doing generating a final render of this scene, which is exciting, right? We've, we've talked about all the basic stuff and how to get to this point, and it's been kind of long and difficult to get here because there's so much to learn to get to this point. So it's cool to actually be here because this is the fun part where now we our artistry comes out, we set up our composition how we want, we set up, we, we move things around in our scene to kind of frame in our, our object that we want to focus on. We think about lighting and color schemes and all these kind of things. This is the fun part for me. Of course, I like a good modeling challenge too. Okay, but once we're here, I like to set up my render elements and make sure they're ready to go. One thing I don't remember if we've talked about or not is the V-Ray denoiser. We can add that onto here as another element that makes it so that the noise that we see in our scene, remember with especially with brute force, we get a lot of noise at the beginning and it refines and it refines and it refines. With the V-Ray denoiser, we can refine it faster and easier and have additional controls over how that noise is going to look. So it's a general way to make your renderings less noisy. Okay, and then I put in some of my other, I typically have a, a, a V-Ray specular, a reflection. I add a V-Ray refraction into here. Okay, so these, these are probably my normal ones here. And this splits out these things, so it'll split out reflection into its own channel. And it'll split out refraction into its own channel. And those are still kind of burned into the RGB channel overall, but it also will, this will also give me those channels individually, which gives me control over them in Photoshop later when I want to do post-processing, right? So there's really no settings that you need to set up here other than just kind of turning them on, enabling them. And actually, enabling, you don't even need to do that. You just have to add them here. And when we go to the V-Ray frame buffer and say save separate channels, it'll save the RGB, it'll save the alpha, and it will save all the separate render channels. You just have to tell it where, right? Or you can save directly out of the frame buffer. So we've talked about basic render settings. I'm just going to use the same thing, just a brute force, basic light cache. And then I just need to set my resolution here. 3000 by 2000 is good. In V-Ray, we're going to say, I have my max subdivisions at 15, which is lower than default. And it'll probably be fine for this. And then I just set my noise threshold to 0.05, set my time to zero. And what this means, as you should know already, is that this will just render until it gets down to this very fine noise threshold. And then it'll stop. Okay. That could take a very long time on this computer. Let's just render this and see. Now, in render elements, light mix, I've mentioned, is V-Ray 5. Okay. If for no other reason... I mean, you should upgrade to V-Ray 5 if for no other reason than this light mix, in my opinion. Light mix is awesome, and for me, it's, like, essential already because it gives you so much artistic freedom on controlling your lights. You don't have to tweak them and then re-render, tweak, re-render, tweak, re-render over and over again. Okay, that can be super time consuming. And here you can just get your light balances just perfect. But you have to add this V-Ray light mix element. Same with V-Ray denoiser. You just won't have the ability to do the denoising if you don't add the element here. Okay, so those are those are important ones. This one is available pre-V-Ray 5. This one is not. Okay, let's render with our frame buffer. Okay, you can see what kind of scene we're getting. We have our lights on inside. Those came in with the models. Some of the models have lights in them, like the chandeliers. Okay, now you can see, I, I'm not really liking the lighting scheme going on here. It's a little too purple. So fortunately, we have the ability to change all that. Now I'm gonna show light mixer stuff. I'm sorry if you don't have V-Ray 5. So you can see here, all my lights can be turned off at once. My V-Ray sun can be turned off or turned back on. Now. 
this gives me a good indication of what lights are doing what. When I turn this V-Ray Sun off, do I like that effect or do I like it on, right? It's giving me that visual cue. And I'm saying, like, let's make this 10 and see what happens. And now we're really seeing that sun shining. Okay, I'm getting absolutely horrible rendering times here. <laughs> so I'm going to have to uh, set it up so I can just have a little bit of time to render on this scene so we can get some final results. But in the meantime, let's just talk about what we're seeing here. So I'm not really liking the environment light because it's too deep purple. And interestingly, environment, the environment light in the light mixer isn't the one doing that. And that's because we added a V-Ray dome with an HDRI, right? So that's actually just a named V-Ray light. And it's in your best interest to name your lights properly here because otherwise it's hard to know what's going on. Okay, but let's look at these lights. So the V-Ray light 05, that's doing something on the inside, you can see. Okay, so there's like a lamp inside there that's being turned on and off. Sometimes if you turn it way up, then you can see better what effect it's having. Turn it to 10. You can see now that whole area is being lit up. I kind of like that actually. Okay, I think my computer's finally come back to me now. Yeah, okay. So let's start from the beginning here. What we're looking at here is the RGB, and you can see all these other channels that have been created mostly because of the V-Ray denoiser and the V-Ray light mixer, they kind of create their own channels. So these are filters. There's a lot of different things that we don't really need to use, but the V-Ray light mixer and the denoiser both create their own stuff, which is fine. The RGB color is the important thing here. This is what the specular looks like. Reflection, where's my refraction? Right there. Okay, so that's everything that's refractive in the scene. Okay, so I'm not even going to be using those here, but they're nice to have. And later on, I'm going to show a little more advanced project with this same model, and we're going to, we're going to use them in there. Okay, but let's just look at the V-Ray light mixer for now. So we have all lights can be turned on and off. The V-Ray sun can be turned on and off. Okay, that's cool. That's like a night scene, right? So if we have the V-Ray sun on, it makes a lot more sense for it to just be really low like there's hardly any sun at all you can also change the color of the sun here because the sun's so subtle i don't think we need to change the color that light is our is our dome light with the hdri okay so we can turn that up and down if we want it to look less like night we can put this back to one i actually like it at 0.5 it's cool and then our scene is being lit mostly by that indoor lamp now i like how bright that is it's cool but I want the color to be really, really warm to contrast with the in, the outside. So we can actually set the color to be something like that. Maybe that's a little too yellow. Something right around there. Kind of that peachy, red, orange, whatever you want to call it. Okay, this light, that's that chandelier in the back. I want to get a similar color to that. There we go. And then environment, we really didn't light our scene with an environment because we had the big V-Ray dome light. So that's not going to change anything. The self-illumination, you can see the light bulbs on those chandeliers turn on and off as I turn on and off self-illumination. And then the rest, there really isn't anything else. Okay, now that we have our light balanced how we want, let's now look at the denoiser. Okay, these are different layers that are applied on top of the source mix. So in this new V-Ray frame buffer, we can go to RGB, which is just straight up how it looks out of the rendering. And you can see how much different that is than the light mix. With our adjustments, it looks like this. Okay, so now we're using that as the base. So it says source light mix here. We're using our light mix settings as the base for our V-Ray frame buffer rendering. Now, if I... There's a layer here for denoiser because we added that render channel. If I turn that on, you'll see what happens to the scene. Okay, do you see how it all looks a lot smoother now? So it's kind of erasing a lot of our details, but it does smooth out a lot of the noise. Okay, so if this rendered a lot longer and my details became way less noisy, then the denoiser would have much less or a much more subtle effect. Okay, but because this was only rendered for a few minutes, then the denoiser is really just blurring a lot of things. The denoiser has settings within it. Okay, you can actually turn up and down the opacity of it like this. See that? 
you can go to custom settings and turn up and down the strength of it if you want and the radius I'm gonna leave it at default okay you'll see there's a lens effects here we can turn on and what that does is it puts lens effects wherever there's bright spots it will do bloom and glare okay and there's a lot of settings for these and how they work I just always recommend to be very subtle with your use of these. They are a realistic effect, but people tend to go overboard with them. So like right there, so there's just this tiny lens flare coming off that hot spot on the top of that brass dome lamp. Okay, that's about right. Something subtle like that. And you can see a little bit of bloom and glare going on here. And of course, with the new V-Ray 5, you can just turn up and down the opacity of it like this. Which, I, I mean, that's, that's fantastic to be able to do that. So awesome. You can do so much refinement of your image in this new V-Ray frame buffer. Okay, and then we can go back to some of the normal stuff that has been there all along in whatever version of V-Ray you have. And that is adding layers for adjustment. So this is just like if you're in Photoshop, you can, you can adjust, you can add any adjustment layer you want. So I already have an exposure and a color balance one here. And exposure is just what it says. You change the exposure of your thing. It's got to be turned on here. Okay, so I actually think that's pretty cool like that. It's actually a really nice lighting scheme. I like it a lot. Okay, and then color balance. I think we are pushing a little bit too much towards purple here, especially in the shadows maybe. So shadows, let's make them more. That's not really working. Maybe push them more towards this. No, it's not working either. If anything, it looks better as it goes more towards purple, right? I don't know, maybe it's good. Oh, that's better. Just so slight, though. I don't know. This is personal preference. Again, you can change your opacity up and down. You can even blend this in a different way. So you could multiply it. Overwrite just means that it's overwriting whatever's in your scene. And this is using math to, to blend it in a different way. Okay. Overwrite is just putting it up right on top of it. If you're familiar with blending modes in Photoshop, same thing. Okay, so we have a lot of options in here. And in my opinion, if we let this render for a long time and got high quality, then this is actually like a finished rendering. We could go in and add more plants in here. We could add 3D people in here, or we could add them in Photoshop later. But this is a pretty cool lighting scheme. Our model looks good. This is a pretty finished rendering. We could we could go into Photoshop and add in background and things like that. So let's move on to something like that where we would take this into Photoshop and make it a really, really polished, finished, finished rendering. Okay. And then we're going to move on to a little bit more advanced project with the same model, but I'm going to demonstrate some other things with it. And you'll see there how we can take it other places and we're going to apply a lot of the things that we've learned already. And that one is going to be with an older version of V-Ray. So no matter what version of V-Ray you have, you will be able to do that one. Well, if it's 12 years old, you might not be able to. But anyway, we'll take the same project. We'll take it in a little bit different direction and get into some more advanced stuff, just applying all the things that you already know. Okay, but for now, let's just look at what we would do with this in Photoshop after, it render, after we let it render for a while and we get a high quality rendering like this one.